Hello, it's Prodigy. Hey, what's up? It's Princeton. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Ray Ray. Hey, what's up? It's Rock Royal. And we are Mindless, Mindless Behavior. Behavior. And you're watching The Scorpion Show with Kevin and Mikkel on YouTube. Hi, Mikkel. Hey. How Did you, you record yet? Yeah, I'm recording right now. Hey. Come sit down. I oh, am. Yeah. You might think I'm crazy, but I'm serious. What's up, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. I think you need to move. Or do I need to? Should I zoom in just a little bit more? I think so. Hold on. We had to record from the living room because I didn't have time to straighten up the table and stuff. You know, even though I waited for Mikhail for like a half an hour, I still didn't have time. But I hope you guys are doing good. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. If you follow me on Twitter and if you're my Facebook friend, you know that I had a Janet-filled weekend. And I made a video all about it, which you can click on this screen right now. Just click the screen if you missed it. You can see all the excitement of me talking about me camping outside of, of, of New York City, uh, staring at Janet Jackson's face and not saying nothing, going to the concert, having a good time, Janet singing come back to me, looking at me while she's sitting in my chair, and me going off. It's clips all over YouTube if you look for Janet Jackson, March 19th. Um, before we get into this video, there are some more things I have to say, so Mikhail, I'm not going to go too long. But... I just want to say thank you to Miss Shannon. Well, I know she's going to get mad because I call her Miss Shannon. But that's what I know your name from Twitter. Thank what is you, her name? Shannon. 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 Yeah. But isn't that her Twitter name? Yeah, Miss yeah. Shannon. I, I mean, when, I, when, you, when you used to say a Twitter name, sometimes you call them by their Twitter name. She took offense to it. But don't take offense. Shannon, just like, thank you so much for introducing me to the whole Janet fam. Even though everyone knew who I was, like... That was, it was so much fun being out there with everyone, singing all the songs, stealing each other's blankets, sitting in each other's chairs while the other go to the bathroom. All of that experience was new for me, even though, again, I don't think I will ever do that again. Um, it was still fun to actually do it. And um, thank you for introducing me to Gil, who is Janet's best friend and choreographer. Just think, like It was so nice meeting him, and Gil, thank you so much for loving the show, and it was nice meeting you, and thanks for giving me a hug and everything. Maybe one day we'll hang out. I don't know, but you know you are very, really, really nice, and thank you for following me on Twitter, too. Um, who else did I meet? Just I met so many. Oh, I met two other Janet dancers. Shout out to them, because uh, I, I don't know her. I don't know the girl name, but she almost kicked me in my face when she was dancing. Um, I think it was on Make Me when she was... She kicked her leg, almost kicked me in the face, cause that's how close I was to this. I was to the stage. Um, Where did? How did you meet them? After the um, show. After the show, they they. Uh, my hotel was actually on Fifty First Street where they were coming out, but it was too. Janet was taking too long for me to stand out there and wait for her, and I was too tired. I really was tired, cause I've been up like practically all day. Um, but I met them outside on the side and Shannon introduced me to everyone and I even met a dancer who was in the Alejandro video So I thought he was actually dancing with Gaga, but he's not and you know It was weird cuz I'm like oh my god y'all know everybody that's in Janet's team as far as the dancers the bodyguards and everything and all I know is Janet and I knew Gil because he's been on all the other tours, but I didn't know all them other dancers. I'm like oh my god like y'all Y'all really, y'all need to take away my stand card because as much as I love Janet, I did not know oh, all the Oh, you're talking about the other fans. Yeah, the Jan fam. They know every damn thing, okay? They were talking about how Joey, Janet's bodyguard, is mean and everything. Not mean, but he's just like, no, you can't touch her. No, you can't say nothing to her. Go, just go. Like, he's like, he's oh, doing it. Like but he's doing thing. his, but you know, they say the same thing about Beyonce's bodyguard, um, Julius, but they're just doing their job. Like, even though we might not, well, I never had that experience with Julius. But they said, no, but that's because you was back, like, you wasn't. But I wasn't, but we're talking about after the Grammys. He didn't tell me to go. No, because first of all, I didn't even see him in the video. But Julius was right there when she stopped and turned around. That's no, the guy that's, standing But she wasn't there. in Beyonce's face. No, neither. I wasn't in, his, in her face, but I mean. Yeah, because he, because I stayed at Jen, he was like, uh, come, come on. Because I couldn't say nothing. I was in awe. But also, 
Go ahead. No, 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 no this is no, your moment. No, 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 Come on, go. Also, also in the VIP area, we got to see all of Janet's memorabilia. She had pictures with uh, Will Smith, Liza Minnelli, um, her sitting on Oprah with Tyler Perry and Jill Scott. I didn't know that was Jill Scott at the time. So I was asking the people, you know, I'm like, what are those boots to? Because I don't remember these two boots. One was to the all, for, not all for you, all night video, and the other one was to, um, Oh, all for you when she did MTV Icon. And I'm telling her, yes, I know what that hat is from. I knew where everything was from except for those two boots. Aww. And who was in the picture. So then we were talking. And then she was, um, all of a sudden I was telling her about Miley's behavior. And I was like, yeah, you know, I was with them in L.A. And I, I was like, they're like brothers and I love them. And she was like, who are you? And I'm like, my Wait, who are you Kevin. talking about? This lady, the first, oh. let me tell you who was I was talking to. I didn't know who she was. So, but we were just busting it up, and then she told me she was Janet's assistant, and her name was Terry. So, shout out to Terry, and thank you so much for talking to me, and, you know, I had a nice time talking to you, and yes, I passed you my card, and I want you to watch the Scorpion show, and yes, hi, Janet, tell Janet to watch, too. Hi, Terry. Um, This weekend has just been, like, oh, my goodness. Again, I will never, ever forget this weekend. But, you know, again, I had a solo video. Y'all can watch me go off about everything in that video. But now we have a video to get into. So thank you, Mikkel, for letting me talk and say what I had to say. No problem. No problem. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just looking at it. No problem. She woke up. <laughs> She woke up. Turn the camera around. <laughs> yeah. So the camera's locked. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Damn. You caught me with my eyes closed. So what? I didn't catch you. He caught you. We so all caught you. I mean, you. what's it supposed to mean? What is it supposed <laughs> to mean? <laughs> Don't look at me and say <laughs> So, okay, we gotta, you know, we gotta do our reality talk. Last week, Beverly Hills. Fabulous and Love and Hip Hop premiere on VH1. And I miss Love and Hip Hop. Okay, but you did see Beverly Hills yeah, Fabulous. Yeah, it's. That's, I mean, go ahead, because that show seems very scripted. It seems me. scripted, yes, because I mean, but to me, it's a hair salon, and every day there's always different things to talk about. But like one of the lady, I can't remember the lady name, but her sliding down a pole and everything. I know she done had this conversation before, but she just bring it up for camera. Sean, Sean is one of those, I'm better than everybody. But I mean, my only thing with Sean is, if you're better than everyone, Sean, why don't you have your own salon by now? You should not still be in Elgin Charles. You should have Sean's blah, 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 hair salon, whatever y'all call your Sean's salons. do is done. Yes, my do is done. My do is done by Sean. <laughs> I don't know, it just seemed very scripted. The part where he was looking for assistance and he was mm -hmm. firing them each one by one and they were just walking out like, eh, uh, it was just like, come on, this is so fake. And then when the girl came back and was just standing there outside of the salon like a stalker, I'm like, what the hell is going on? What are you doing? Oh. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, this was too... Mikkel. Yes? Don't think you're beneath me hitting you with this broom. They can't see I would do it. Good. <laughs> I'm surprised like, I didn't see Mick. Like, even that part was kind of... Yeah, big. come on, because nobody would do that and no... It didn't seem real. I mean, will I be... I mean, I can I'm see myself... I'm still going to watch it. Yeah, I'm still going to watch it, too. It's hilarious. Because I want to see when those trannies attack someone. Oh, my God. I didn't Did you see that part? See and they came... Video. I think they either pulled out mace or uh, a razor or whatever, but they was going in. That part wasn't scripted. Mm -mm. No. Well, I can't wait to see that. So I was watching. I actually watched it on my on the bus on my way to New York, and then I seen Love and Hip Hop. So basically, you have Jim Jones and his girlfriend. You have <laughs> Fabulous and his fiance. wife or no, that's fiance. Fiance. Yeah, that's fiance. And you have what's the other chick? Mashanda. No, she was just on there talking to Fabulous girlfriend. I don't know who that chick is. I don't well, watch the show. Yeah, though. I mean, <laughs> what is it about? Who? What is it about? Now, I don't want Jim Jones trying to come for me, trying to attack me. But I'm just saying, Jim Jones, you do not need to be on this show. Your girlfriend does not need to be on this show. No one knows who she is. I'm just, for her to get jealous of Samaya Reese, I've never heard of her until I watched this show. But the girl has a wonderful body. For her to be so threatened by Samaya, you don't need to be with a woman like that. That's not 
secure in who she is. Because if she was secure in who she is, she would not be jealous of another woman that's sexier than her working with you. It, it was, it was. But maybe she knows the type of man that Jim Jones is. Well, hey, well, she don't need to be with that she type don't. of man. She I don't, don't care how many years she done but been with But then again, you know how some of those, I'm not saying that she's like that, but you know how some of those girls are. Some yeah. of them only with them for the money. For the money. Bro. And then they, and then later on down the line, that's when the feelings start coming in. Mm -hmm. And then by then, everything, their priorities are But she's done been with him for six years. Now, if she's in her 30s and you want kids and you want a husband, it's time to get those bags packed and go somewhere else. Come on now. She almost fell. <laughs> she better stand up, man. Like you need to go upstairs. upstairs. Go to I sleep. need to be, do what I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, Fabulous and his girlfriend. Their situation. Beyonce. That's his Beyonce. Fabulous and his girlfriend. She got the child. Yes, yeah, she, she got the child now. So the check's always going to keep coming. <laughs> but she wants. <laughs> let me stop. But she wants what? She wants the the whole the whole family thing, but fabulous image. What image does fabulous have? Come fabulous on, doesn't girl. even seem like a bad boy. No. He just seems like somebody who does his job, he does it well, and everybody don't hear everybody anything about love, him. everybody love fabulous. Yeah, though. it's like you don't never hear anything bad. I about didn't even fabulous. know he had a girlfriend or a have son. Have you seen his son? The son is he looks like her. Yeah, which it kinda it scares me because the son doesn't look like him. I mean, he's not even his family's skin. Well, I mean, sometimes when you mix with I'm them I'm not saying races, that's not his child, but I'm just saying. It don't when you get with them like races, the, 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 the female race is more dominant. Well, whatever light race they normally take over. But I, I was know, I didn't know. pay attention to the pictures too much. But it was it was too much going on. Mashonda giving her little two-piece. And I know she wasn't allowed to say she was married to Swiss Beats. Because how the way she was talking, like, I was married to a famous producer and it just didn't work out or uh -huh. whatever. So she's giving her advice yeah, on what happened to her, her to Fabulous's girlfriend, well, fiance. I mean, it's I don't know. I don't. I don't like how the way she came off telling her that because that leaves a little bit of doubt in their relationship. But it was. I don't know if I'm gonna keep. But watching sometimes, that sometimes you need somebody to come and tell you stuff like that. But it's up to you to make the decision for yourself whether or not mm -hmm. you wanna. But yeah. I think that with with uh, Mashanda's and Swiss Beats marriage, I don't think it was something that could have been saved. Like, well, no, because from what I'm hearing, he he was messing with Mashanda the same way he started messing with Alicia Keys, the same way he started messing with Mashanda mm -hmm. with another. So I mean, it was bound to happen. Even though I feel bad for her, I feel bad for everybody in the situation. But it was bound to happen. So it's hopefully just Alicia and Mashanda now that they have children together, they can one day talk it out, woman to woman. And you know the public don't know about it. Like, woman just to woman. just keep it woman to woman, and we don't need to know about what's going on in your relationship. And I don't think she should have made it as private, even though we know Alicia and yeah, we know. Well, I mean that's the same thing with Latavia on uh, <laughs> the Housewives of Atlanta. Yeah, cause so and so girl, just say Beyonce. Just say it. Hmm. Well. Well, yeah. Do we? Did Beyonce really tell her she? Uh, we don't know, we don't but know. I mean, we we know it wasn't Kelly, and it wasn't Latoya. Come on, it was Beyonce. Mm. I mean, wasn't Beyonce the bitch in the group? Isn't that what everybody called her the bitch? So I mean, clearly it was her. So let me know how do y'all feel about loving hip hop and fabulous Beverly Hills fabulous. Um. Oh yeah, that whole thing with Tanika Ray and them trying to go see that um apartment. If you really, if if Elgin Charles really wanted to go see that new apartment, I would have left Tanika Ray right there. I know you love her and everything, but we talking about getting your shop into a, a new area and a new place. Tanika would have had to wait. She just show up out of nowhere, but that was all scripted anyway. But um, yeah, the show is just scripted. There's nothing. It's scripted. I didn't see too much of Celebrity Apprentice. I missed the first oh, thirty God. minutes. And from what I seen, it just looked like Heidi was ready to go home. Heidi really did not care. Who the she, hell is Heidi? Not Heidi. What was her damn name? Nikki. Nikki. Well, what show are we watching? <laughs> Heidi. Who? Nikki. Nikki didn't care too much. Excuse me. No, she didn't. She was just ready to go home. I lost, blah, blah, blah. Didn't. No, no. But you know what? I like Nikki because Nikki was a true team leader. Mm -hmm. Nikki took the blame. And, you know, she was a team leader. And at the end of the day, with team leaders, everything falls back on you. Mm -hmm. 
the book stops here. Like for instance, um, even it's just like in politics with the presidency. Barack Obama has a team of people that work for him. But if something goes bad, nobody's not going to say, oh, well, Hillary Clinton, Secretary of State, this is your fault. It's good. They're going to point the finger at the president. So it's like, you know, because he's the leader. That's what it was with Nikki. At the end of the day, she was the leader, and so she took the fall. If her team did bad, then it's because of her, because she didn't have responsibility. But I like that she did it with class. And Yes, but when you are a team, though, everyone a part of the team must do the, their uh, job. Yes. Even if you felt like... Even though you could have fell, even though it looked bad on you, but if somebody didn't do their job, you could say, well, if so-and-so would have done their job in this part, this would have never happened. You know, Natalie Cole started to get on my nerves on that show. Natalie Cole, Dion Warwick, D <laughs> you really fucking... D? Yes, Dion Dion Warwick. Dion Warwick. And Dion that Warwick. gunk chewing. <laughs> oh, God. That ugly ass that's piece nicotine, of gum. That, that's nicotine gum. That, that gunk has chewing. got to go. That's, that's that nicotine gum. That ain't regular gum. She... <laughs> Oh, I asked you on that bus. No, no, no. She no, really... You calm down. Don't tell her to calm she down. She was talking to her like she was... She, she's like, she no. Said no she said, Miss Dion, I need you to talk to me like I'm an Adele. I am talking to you like an Adele. You don't tell me what to try to talk to you. I just want to know why she's on that bus. Mm -mm -mm. She's like, where is where is Hope? Hope. Where is Hope? Okay. Uh, is, is Hope... Did you see that part? Yes. Okay, now maybe you can answer this for me because I was confused. Mm -hmm. So was Hope on the men's bus giving a tour? No, Hope was on Dion's bus. Basically, how does Dion have a bus? Wait, well, it was two trailers. But basically, no, but basically what Dion is saying is this is our inside camp. You guys are outside. Oh, Why the hell is, is she, she bringing people inside, inside giving tours? Oh, okay, so basically... Half of the women were supposed to do the tours inside, and the other half was doing the tours outside. outside. Yes. Okay, because I didn't understand what, what was being but said. But because there was nothing outside to show, Hope decided to, to take go them inside. inside. Okay, well. So D and instead of Dion, Miss Dion, you are 71 years old. 70. It's se 70? Yeah, because her birthday is the same as mine. Okay. Sagittarius. She's 70 years old. Probably 69 at the time of this taping. <laughs> <laughs> If somebody's doing something you don't like, you don't beat around the bush with the questions, damn it. Yeah, you, you straight up say it. You've been around the block a couple of times. Because Whitney, you know what? Whitney would say something. Because Whitney would say, Dion, I know you know better, you hussy, okay? I know you know better. How dare you call Nikki a hussy? I ain't heard hussy since my grandmother was alive. And my grandmother's been dead ever since 1994, okay? Now, Dion, something ain't hussy. You took it way back, okay? She said, I got your number, hussy. Mm -hmm. Well, which number is that? She better walk on by. Let's walk all, on by. Let's if all you see me walking <laughs> down the street and I start to cry. Walk on mm -hmm. by. For those of y'all youngsters that don't know what that song is, that's one of Dion Warwick's old songs. Mm -hmm. from way back in And the she day. sounded really good singing it, but yes, her did. look back in the day... <laughs> Walk on back in the day, it wasn't on the looks. Look, back in the day, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't. Sure, because, because. I, I don't do it. No, I ain't gonna come don't for you, girl. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because Miss Patty, Patty, baby. Patty, lucky she had that voice. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Speaking of voices. Because that nose. <laughs> Sorry, Patty, but it was. That nose was horrible. Speaking of voices, did you hear about this, the, um, the way they're going to do the show, The Voice? That new show with Christina Aguilera and them, I didn't understand what the, how that was. What the was way, like. from what I've seen on the commercial, the way they're going to, I don't know if they're going to judge every person by having their back face towards them. Oh, that's a stupid thing. But I think, no, I think it's good because it's showing a different way to do the music industry. Because, you know, everything in the music industry is based on your look. And basically, that's it. Because they don't give a fuck about the voice. It's how you look. And basically, that's it. So, the way they're doing the show is they're going to have their faces towards the audience. And all they're going to do is hear the voice. The voice. But, so, they'll judge that way. But, but okay, that's fine and dandy. The show is doing that. But then, whoever wins, once they get into the industry part of it, then what? Because, as know. we all know, the industry is mostly about the look. But maybe, so, then what's the point of a show? Well, maybe this like show, voice? who knows how popular this show may get. Because look at Susan Boyle and look what it did for her. Like, no, she's not the most attractive woman in the world. But when you hear that voice, 
Her voice is so calm and like I listen to her music. People might not think that I wouldn't, but I listen to her music. I like to listen to it because I love her voice. Like I don't care about her face. And back in the day, it wasn't about the look. It was about the voice. Can she sing? Can she sell a record with that voice? And maybe this industry do need to go back into that. But we're in a different era now, so I don't know how successful this show is going to do, but I hope it does well. But I don't understand the purpose of this show when you have a show like American Idol, which has all different types of diversity. But American Idol, now let's be for real. American Idol, they're all looking for a certain image. And what do they want? They really want a pop star. And we haven't had an R&B singer win American Idol since Fantasia. Yes, Je Jessica, what's that girl name? Jordan Sparks. Jordan Sparks is black, but she's a pop star, okay? They did not turn her into no R&B star. And they're looking for a certain image. So maybe with this show, The Voice, will get all different kinds of genres and people will maybe buy their albums. I don't know. I, just, I will be watching April 26th. I think, this show show is, I think this show is going to be pointless. I don't think it's going to last. I hope I it turns out. Well, and, and if you I look don't. at the judges... All the judges had different looks. Come on, CeeLo. Yeah, they all do have different looks. Christina that's Aguilera. Just, but see, that's what I'm saying. That's American Idol right there. Everybody on American Idol does not look the same. But they, they all are different and they all are diverse. What's the point of you judging somebody with your back towards them? Like, I don't understand that. Now, I don't know how far they're going to go without looking at the person. I don't know. Like, I just don't understand but, that. It, it makes no sense to me. I would rather go on American Idol where the judges are looking at me than away from me. Okay, you listen to my voice, but I need you to look at me too. Tell me if I have stage presence. How are you going to tell me if I have stage presence if your back is towards me? Again, it's called The Voice. Yeah, but I mean, okay, well, it's not just about, of course, somebody can sing their ass off, but I also want them to have stage presence. I want you to yeah. sing like Celine Dion, but don't know how to walk and work the stage. But who, can, who can sing that don't have stage presence? Who can sing that doesn't have stage presence? Like somebody yes. who can sing that doesn't have stage presence. Because I don't know who that is. Um, I don't know a singer out there who doesn't have stage presence. But see, that's what I mean by the voice. Like, I don't, okay, you're judging them on their voice, but what about their overall stage presence? Like America Idol, they don't just judge them on their voice. They judge them on how, they, how they're working the crowd. And how they look. And Well, yeah, and how they look too. But the they don't discriminate. They don't you discriminate like and say, oh, well, you're too big or you too fat. Look at Ruben Stutter. Look how big he was. I think that they do have that. I, mean, I don't think American I mean, Idol even, discriminates even, like that. I don't think so. Because, I think so. Well, I, mean, I mean, come on. If that I was the case, so. Fantasia would have never made it. Fantasia would have never made it. Look, Fantasia would have never made it. Ruben wouldn't have never made it. Clay Aiken would have never made it because he don't look like nobody's. Even though you, star. even though you're big, if you have a look, like everyone that's big is not. Yeah, ugly. but everybody in this industry is not looking for a Ruben Stutter type or a Fantasia no, type. No, but not. they made it through. Yes, they did. And you can't and you can't deny a person once they made it through. No, you can't. But where's Ruben now? Well, whose fault is that? I don't know. That's not, that's not, I that's don't not, know. we voted his ass in. Now what? I don't, well, you gotta buy the albums too. If yeah. You all, I, I want to know how you doing all this voting <laughs> and then nobody's doing no buying. <laughs> you know what why? the hell is going it's on? Not, and you don't have to, it don't cost to vote. That's why. They cheap. Well, I mean, remember, I, like I said on Twitter, remember when CDs were like $5? <laughs> Like, you came out single for one twenty nine on iTunes? Come on. Yeah, 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 that's true. You're right. You're, I saw when you tweeted that, and you're absolutely right. So, what, what, I, I know I know you know, because you are the CNN of what's going on. Let's talk about what's going on in Libya, because I woke up this morning, and I seen that there's some bombs going off. What's going on with that? Well, well of course you know, ever since me, Muammar Gaddafi came out of that whole... Whatever the hell he was in, I can't think of the word where he was in, but he was, uh, I think he was, well, he was released from whatever he was released from due to the fact that he was involved in that 1988 bombing of the Pan Am flight that killed all those Americans and whatnot. Um, so he's now taken control over Libya now, and so majority of the people in Libya are not happy with that because he is a dictator. He's not only a dictator, but he's an evil dictator. And um, he's associated with terrorism. People call him a terrorist. Um, and a lot of people don't like that. And a lot of people feel as though he's going to run the country with an iron fist. He's going to, you know, just turn everything. It's going to be bad. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to be good. And so a lot of the people over there are kind of suffering because they want him out. They don't want him to hold power, but he's, you know, he has the power now. Mm -hmm. And so the United States warned him the United States, um, the UN, you know, they all warned him saying that if you don't, 
you know, step down, then we're going to take action against you. And so that's what us, the United States, did on Saturday. We shot some missiles over at Libya. Um, basically like a scare. There are 13 missiles. Yeah, basically like a scare. Now, to be... To, just to make it clear, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, we're going to World War Three, World War Three. I doubt if this even becomes a full blown out war war like it was in Iraq and um, Afghanistan, because from what I'm hearing, Gaddafi and his people are, you know, tr pleading for the U.S. to stop, you know, bombing them, you know, because they really don't have a strong military over there. Um, and President Obama said that the U.S. will not have any ground troops in Libya. All this stuff is coming from, you know, by air. Oh, my so God. So that, which kind of shows you but that... But that can kill not, a lot of innocent people, It can too. kill a lot of innocent people, and I think from from what I heard on Saturday, about 50 to 60 people were killed. Don't know if they were innocent or whatever the case may be. But, um, I just want to know what people who are watching this video, what people think about Obama taking a step in doing that. Because a lot of people feel as though the U.S. should just mind their business with a situation like that. But me personally, I don't think so. Because when you have people over in a different country who can't really fend for, fend for themselves, themselves and they're, you know, crying out for help, you know, us being the country that we are, it's like, you know, we can't just let them sit and have this man take over their country. Because God knows what, you know, 10 or 20 years from now, oh he may God. be a superpower. He could be like you know, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein. And, and then we'll really have a problem. So I kind of agree with what, you know, the U.S. and Britain are doing. Um, I, I kind of agree with it. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn out into a full-fledged war war like Iraq and Afghanistan. Because God Please knows we don't need another one of those. Our crisis we don't it. need another one of those. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think after, because, you know, the president is in South America mm -hmm. for the next few days. So hopefully when he comes back from South America, he'll give, like, a thorough speech to the country of what exactly is going on. Because a lot of people are kind of... You know, they're not really understanding what exactly it is mm -hmm. that we're doing over there. But hopefully this works. Now, you know, I got to ask Mikel these because I'm not a big politic person or into politics that much, but I need to get into it now. I, I see. Um, why did um, Hillary Clinton step down? Was saying she's not going to uh, stay with the administration after 2012? I honestly think that, I don't think it's anything shady, because Hillary Clinton said herself that she's not running for president in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I think what a lot of people don't, and they were bashing her on the Tom Joyner Morning Show last week, but I think what a lot of people fail to realize is that Hillary Clinton has been in politics for almost 40 years before she even married Bill Clinton, for those of you that didn't know that. Hillary Clinton was senator of uh, was a senator from New York City. She was the first lady of the United States. She was the wife of Bill Clinton when he was governor of Arkansas. And she was in politics in the 70s before she even met Bill Clinton. So this woman has been in politics for over 40 years. Now she's Secretary of State. I'm sure she is tired. And she's in her 60s. I think she's, enough is enough. And she's really aging. Yeah, yes. enough is enough. Like, she wants to enjoy herself. And I don't blame her. I don't think it's anything wrong with her. I mean, if anybody knows anything about politics and history, a lot of Secretary of State and uh, Franklin Roosevelt. He had about four vice pre four or five vice presidents when he was president. So I mean, a lot of people don't always stay. They leave when the term is up. So I mean, I mean, if she feels as though she, she wants to go by the end of the you know next term, then fine. But I'm glad she's not stepping down now. Mm -hmm. I'm glad she's waiting until his and first term is she, over. And I hope that she really rallies for him. Oh well, yeah, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I know she'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I who know do you think? Do who do you think? Has a good chance to win in the Republican nomination. Mitt Romney. Mitt, Mitt Romney. And I want y'all to hold this to me. So come next year. When we're on TV to, talking I want about to this. Pull this video and say, you know what? <laughs> Mikel said it on the Scorpion Show on March 21st, 2011, that he thinks that Mitt Romney is going to be the Republican nominee. Because nobody is going to vote for Sarah Palin come 2012. Not even Republicans. You know why? Because Sarah Palin's polls are dropping just as fast as the president's polls. She's not likable anymore. I think people are tired of her, even the Republicans. I think Mitt Romney has a ch good chance of becoming the pre Republican nominee. And if he does become the Republican nominee, mm -hmm. Barack Obama is really going to have a real competitor. And I think what's really going to hurt uh, Sarah Palin is what happened to Giffords in Arizona. Oh, with that, I yeah. think that's really after that, hurt after her. those comments, her polls 
with the Republicans started going down and down and down. And it's just like, nobody really cares for her like that anymore. I mean, she still has a... Sarah Palin, this is what I will give to Sarah Palin. For somebody like Sarah Palin, who was just introduced to the world at the end of the, the um, election in 2008, mm -hmm. two years, three years later, this woman is really, really big. Like, she can go to an event and command, like, a whole large crowd. Like, a whole group of people can come out and see her. So that I will give her credit for, because not many people, especially in the Republican Party, can do that. Mm -hmm. I know, because I follow politics very well. But I give her that. But on her popularity, it's not, it's not what it was, let's say, this time last year. It's not what it would it, it's not really what it is. But like I said, Mitt Romney, if he does become the nominee, Barack Obama is going to have a challenge. Because Mitt Romney, um, in the state of Massachusetts, he had a, I think it was their health plan, which was like a really good health care for that state. Why did I just push this? Hello? I don't know why I just did that, and I don't know how I just did that on my phone. You gotta be careful if you have iPhones, because you can do things that you don't realize you're doing. And I heard that me being a part of the T-Mobile family, we're about to become a part of the AT&T family, because AT&T has brought out T-Mobile for $39 billion. <laughs> Who, man? That is a lot of freaking money, and they're going to get $24 million up front and $15 billion in profits. So if you have T-Mobile and you did not hear, maybe within the next year or so, you will be a part of the AT&T family. And I want to know, should I stay with AT&T after they merge or should I stick or find a new carrier like Sprint or, stay with AT &T. or Verizon? Maybe stay I should go to Verizon. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> did, did you hear about, uh, what's his name, uh, 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 Gilbert Gottfried? No, I seen he was a trending topic, though. You know, he got fired from Aflac. Why? They fired him because last week he made some not-so-funny jokes about Japan on his Twitter. Oh. And come to find out, Aflac does 75% of their business with Japan. Japan. Wow. And so he made some jokes that weren't too funny to a lot of people, and they fired him. They said... Can't do it with you no more. But a lot of people, including a lot of comedians, came to his defense saying that a lot of people know that in during rough times, comedians tend to make light of certain situations. But Sherry Shepard made a very good point on the view. Because mm -hmm. Joy and you know Whoopi, they weren't necessarily taking up for him, but they were saying from a comedic standpoint. But Sherry said, well, look, I'm a comedian too. And nothing he said was funny. And at the end of the day, if people are saying that he was just making light to make people feel better on some of the stuff that he was saying, then who was he making feel better? Mm -hmm. The people in Japan or us? Because nothing that he said was funny. One of the things that he said, hopefully I get it, I know I'm not going to get it absolutely right, but one of the things, the jokes that he said was something like, somebody is, so, oh, somebody's looking for a new girlfriend, some, something in Japan, and he said, well, you know, it shouldn't be that hard for you to find one. You can just find one floating by now or something like that. Like it just it was it was it was not funny. It it just it wasn't funny. even even if seventy five percent of their business come from Japan, I still don't think he is someone that should represent that con not that country, represent that um, company. Company like that's why I do say that image, image does help you stay with the company, and image does have a lot to do with, you know, you keeping your job. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you disagree with it at one point, but this is some of the reasons why I said you must be careful of the things you say and be careful of the things that you do because, in the end, this gets you out of endorsement deals and, you know, have you seen the door, the way out the door. But something that we have not discussed, that we need to discuss, is Charlie Sheen. Yeah, but let me just ask you this real quick before we get to Charlie Sheen. Mm -hmm. so, they, somebody said... Do you think he would have been fired had Aflac not been such a big partner with That's Japan? what I was saying. You Do know, you I think he would have been fired? Probably not. If it wasn't as big, as like if it didn't get as big, yeah. if it didn't get as big as everyone making this out to be, probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably not. And, you know, again, that's something that Aflac needs to question. Like, if this happened to China, would you care? 
and this is Africa, would you care? Or if he made this joke about Haiti, would you care? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and another thing, all of this, um, before we get to Charlie Sheen, mm -hmm. some people was leaving stuff on our video talking about the end of the world because of the earthquake of 9-11 plus the Japan earthquake equals 12-21, Excuse me, what about the, the earthquake that was in Haiti? What about the earthquake that was in Chile? What about... Um, us, Hurricane Katrina. What about all of that? Where is these things What now? about the millions of earthquakes that this, yes. this <laughs> earth has been having since any of us has been on it? What about those? It's. I mean, hello. Earthquakes happen all the time on Earth. Why? Because the Earth is fat and she needs to belch a couple times a year, okay? I mean, that's basically what the earthquakes are. Gases and air is being released from the ocean, okay? I mean, come on. Stop being so damn silly, okay? I'm going to tell you what my mom used to say. Take your simple ass upstairs and read a book. Yes. So now let's get to Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. The media has been on a frenzy for the past month with Charlie Sheen. Winning. And the Scorpion show. Winning. Okay. Was not going to give him no shine. Winning. But I have to talk about this. Because we're talking about Charlie Sheen, who is a drug addict and a wife beater. And he's known to beat up a lot of his wives and things like that and he doing all of this shit excuse me he still had a television show mm -hmm. and all of a sudden since charlie sheen started this is the producers of the show now we have a problem we're going to fire you uh -huh. what about all of that shit before you know, I know Charlie Sheen is powerful. He got a lot of money. He brought a lot of money into the company. But just because he's bringing all of that money into the company, when you see that someone is doing drugs, see that someone is abusing their wife, why weren't those things like him having a job, him recording on this show, taken away before all of this? You know why? Because why? he was bringing the money. Like he was said. bringing the money, That's yes. Why. But they're not going to stop their people. You know, from you know what? But they are glorifying this, uh -huh. all of this shit that he's doing. But when you had a kid like Chris Brown abuse Rihanna the way he did, oh my God, this is the biggest thing in history. <laughs> you know, oh my God, look at this black man beating on this black woman. Oh, let's take away all of his endorsement deals. Let's take away everything away, even though he's bringing all of this money into all of these other companies that he's with. But you get, and, and this is clear as day, you can see the racism that's going on in this industry with this man on drugs. No one wants to help him. I don't give a fuck because he's bringing in extra money into us. Mm -hmm. And he's beating up on his wife. And CBS should have been shut him down. They should have been shut his ass down. Y'all let him sit there and make $3 million. Oh, you are, you are proud of having someone $3 billion beating up on their wife working for your company. $3, three million a show, $1.5 million a show. I don't give a damn. He's making too much money and y'all glory. And the media is just glorifying this like he's some sort of God winning all day. That man is fucking crazy. Can't they see that on this TV screen? I am tired of seeing him on TV. The only thing that took Charlie Sheen off TV was that Japan earthquake. Mm -hmm. And now this bitch, I'm looking at, I'm at Radio City Music Hall and I see Charlie Sheen April 10th and 11th. Oh, you know, he has, a, you know he has a one man tour. And he sold he out. out. Oh my he God. Out. What the fuck is going on? He sold out. How can you still I love this man that much. But wait, wait a minute. Charlie Sheen is not even a comedian. So what kind of show is he doing? I don't he's know. Out. They are doing, he's you not know a comedian? what? We're going to find him dead somewhere one day if he does not God get forbid. up. God forbid. Yes. But they're going to find him. He's not in his right mind. No, he's not. Come on, y'all. No, he's not. Y'all, y'all glorifying this, making this look good. But when you had a bitch like Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown. Ain't no, it wasn't no glorifying that shit. It was not. But y'all is just making it look like this this love fest. Winning every every any any interviewer should have been saying, you know, we think he needs help. They should have been saying all kinds of stuff before putting this interview TV like everyone is celebrating that they have Charlie Sheen on their TV screen.
You know, this is fucking bullshit. I don't understand this one man show. I, I don't, don't understand a... it. I don't he understand needs it. help. I don't understand it at all. The only good thing that's coming out of this one man show is that he has said that one dollar from each ticket that he sells, he's going to donate to the people in Japan. That's the only good one thing I can see. Well, one dollar out of all the tickets that he sells, which is a lot of money. I mean, especially if you sell out. Well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be saying. Sell I shouldn't be saying. Out I, who am I to tell someone how much they should do me to any damn thing? <laughs> who am I? But I'm just saying. Girl, bye. And he wanted yeah. all this extra money, it's and he wants to give a dollar to Japan. Right. Listen, listen, no, listen. He's taking a dollar from each ticket sale. And how much he gonna he sell, sell these tickets for? I don't know. But I mean, that's a lot of damn money, especially if he sold out Radio City Music Hall. Well, that's $6,000. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of people. So, so basically, $6,000. $6, <laughs> but I don't know. Wait, don't. wait, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. Radio City Music Hall is not the only place that he's touring at. So, I mean, he's going around the country. So, I guess, you know, the money from different venues. Winning in the KCB. all weekend. Yeah, but Radio City Music Hall probably will be the biggest venue that he's going to be performing at, but somebody needs to go to the show and then tell us what exactly is he going to be doing at the show. Maybe we can get to tickets go. to this show. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go. Sure. I'd rather go see Sierra than Joe. You know who I really want to see? I want to see Marsha Ambrosius and um, Melanie Fiona, but I won't be able to see them because I'm going to be out of town. When gonna, is their tour? Um, they're on tour right now. They're doing BET Music Matters tour. So Are they coming here? they Come here April third, so you should try to get tickets to go. They go to um Fourth and South TLA. What's that? Theater of Living Arts, right there next to Copacabana. Oh, you know I don't know those places. Well, I think I think you should go. That should and be then nice. You should tell us April how 3rd. it is. How yeah. much is the tickets? Do you know? It's probably gonna be like twenty, thirty dollars. It's not gonna be a lot. I think you should go. Now I have to find somebody to go. With. When is April third? Call up Nitra. Yeah, I call Nitra. April third is a Monday. No, April fourth. It's a Monday. Is it April 4th or April 3rd? April 4th. April 4th. I think we should really go. So, um, you guys. That should be cool. Dancing with the Stars is tonight. And I have to go home fast. Yeah, he has to get so I can see. Because I might be watching the repeats because I have to watch my wrestling. Y'all know how I am on Mondays. And Atlanta. I will be in Atlanta all next week. And my Michelle Williams voice. Atlanta? Yes, when she came out. I hate yeah. Child, I can't do it tonight. Um. Oh my goodness. Um, we're gonna close this show with a preview of Braxton Family Values. Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna close. But before we show y'all our girls, um, the Braxton, we want to also give another birthday shout out to Tamar. Yes, Tamar. Tamar turned twenty nine again on last. <laughs> Uh, what was Thursday, uh, Saint Patrick's Day. Turn twenty nine again, go girl. I wish I could be like you. Happy okay. birthday to you. Turning, Happy birthday to you. Anyway, to you. I had to return the favor since she sang Happy Birthday to me. Uh, oh, did she? Yeah, she sang Happy Birthday to me on my birthday. Oh, well then she must not have had my phone number when it was mine. <laughs> oh, so she ain't call you on your birthday? Did she? Tawanda called you. Yeah, that's she should have had Tawanda sing. Tawanda, I know you can sing, but why didn't you sing it? <laughs> they was anyway, in Russia, and she could have. Oh yeah, Tawanda. Oh yeah, you know what? Forget Tamar, cause Tawanda called me all the way from <laughs> Russia. Okay. <laughs> How many people can say that they had to like call them for Russia? Okay. So. <laughs> How do they talk over there? I don't know. I don't know either. You wanna get your ass with <laughs> oh, yeah. trying to imitate all of these people. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Um, I wanna give a shout out to my homie Rocky. Um, me and Rocky was on Skype the other day and he let me listen to a lot of his new tracks, which were really good. Um, he's uh Rocky Montana on Twitter, so make sure y'all check him out. Who else I wanna give a shout out to? Um I want to give a shout out to my girl Beyonce because child is she coming. She is coming. I and seen I that picture. Is that new? What Whoa. picture? The picture where she's standing with them shoes on and the red dress and she got her back. And that's she not her. Right? That was a hot ass no, 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 picture. But mind you, that's her face. But I saw the real picture. It's uh, actually a white model. But whoever, whoever did, did that it. made it look. That was a hot picture and I was hoping it was her. But then I saw Let the real picture. Let me tell you what picture, that picture is a hint to. Y'all bitches better watch y'all back. back. Okay. <laughs> Y'all better watch your back. But uh, my <laughs> girl is definitely coming. How do I know she's coming? Because the other night, 
I had a wet dream for the first time in five years, and, and that's also who would be honest. It's like I'm blind. Oh, I ain't had a wet dream, child, please. So. Gonna but anyway, make, gonna make, she's gonna coming. Make your who else is coming? Um, I want to give a shout out to. I want to give a shout out to Miss Shannon, Inez, Sharice, Robert, Mark, Purple Pleather, to the twins. I couldn't get y'all names right. I want to give a shout out to Gil. I want to give a shout out to the dancer that almost kicked me in my face. I want to give a shout out to the dancer that danced in Alejandro video. I want to give a shout out to Gil for watching the Scorpion Show videos and thinking that we're funny. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Terry. I want to give a shout out to Miles Behavior. I want to give a shout out to Janet Jackson for signing my book. Where's the book so you can show the them the autograph? Oh, they've seen the autograph. No, they've seen the autograph. I didn't see the autograph. Oh my God. This is so nice. Sit your happy ass down since you can't find it. It just, just comes come over here. It's over here. It's my belt keeps falling off my behind. But um, shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody watching Scorpion Show. Oh my goodness, we're almost at seventy-two thousand subscribers. So shout out to y'all. Oh, and please tomorrow go pick up Fame. Chris Brown's new album, The yes. Fame, go pick it up. And, make and sure Jennifer Hudson's new album comes out tomorrow, too. And I'm going to be reviewing Chris Brown and Jennifer Hudson on Wednesday, so, so look for that video. make sure y'all still get Chris Brown. There. Oh, I can't wait to see oh, Jennifer Oh, Chris Brown wants to sell a million I, in a week. I can't wait to see Jennifer Hudson's um, Where You At video. I thought it was I saw, already. Oh, well, I haven't seen it yet, and I saw mm -hmm. a clip of it, and I loved it. Jennifer Hudson, I love that song. Chris Brown, I Chris um, Brown, we want Chris Brown. Tweet Chris Brown. We want I'm, Chris I'm about Brown to find Chris Brown people. Show. I'm about to hunt his people down. We Chris want you on the show, Chris. Chris Brown. Chris Brown. We want you on the show. Brown. If we gotta go to New York, Brown. I don't care. We will go. We want you on the show. If we have to go to that bathroom when you took that Oh my ass, god. We will go. <laughs> I'm just saying. On go. that note, enjoy the Braxton Family Values clip. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Ciao. My family does not support me, and that's just, you know, what it is. I did not know this is what you wanted and like to do. I didn't know that. Oh, Tamar, you, uh, you got oh, nerve going on all day, Tamar. Please welcome Tony Braxton. My name is Tony Braxton. I'm the oldest of my sisters. We grew up as a group, Braxton family. We sung in church every Sunday. I think my sisters resent my success. Hello, ooh, 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 me. I'm Tamar Braxton. Well, ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to be a famous singer. Now I'm at the point in my life where I want to be known as Tamar. I am Tawanda. Right now, I am acting as Tony's personal assistant. One time she told me, stop thinking like an artist and think like an assistant. It really hurt my feelings because I had my own dreams and my own aspirations. I'm Tracy Renee Braxton. When I was younger, I got pregnant. So my singing career with the Braxtons was gone. I miss being on stage for swimming with my sisters. I'm Trina Braxton. I've been Tony's background singer since birth. I absolutely feel judged by my sisters all the time. I got a D. On Wednesday. Where? By your church. And I got arrested and went to jail. They made me take off my wig, my stocking hat, my underwear. What? I am Evelyn Braxton. My ex-husband was my first love. When I found out about his infidelity, I was devastated. Daddy! They see it as, oh, that's my dad. I see it as this man violated me. You lay it low and spread it wide. You don't care who it is. Figure that out. OK, well, this is my stove. Our family cooks together a lot. But sometimes it gets heated because we fight. Sit down. You are not the oh, judge and the cook. That's nasty. We ain't going to talk about that. And the shrimp is what the money is. Now taste the shrimp. The shrimp is salty. I tasted the shrimp. They had to put me on Lipitor. It's okay. It's okay. I got you. Forever. In real friendship and real family, that's what we're here for. Always. Cheers. I am not playing the 
Attack.com game. Yes, I'm not are. doing it. No, I'm really not. I, I think y'all should go, actually. Ooh, ooh. Well, that, that's my cue first.